Hi everyone, hope you're doing well today. Uh, today we've got uh, Mahdi with us. He is the creator of Tandis, an absolutely beautiful game. And uh, as a game designer, sorry about the chicken, he's going to be giving us uh, a bit of information and a sneak peek into the way that he's built the game. So Mahdi, the floor is yours. Thank you. Okay, so uh, first I do an introduction and then I start my uh, presentation. So. This is, this is my first time doing a presentation on Zoom. So if I'm doing something wrong, please let me know. Okay. So uh, I am Mahdi Bahrami. I, I make games uh, like little indie game about geometry and Islamic art. And I would like to show you my games and how I find ideas uh, and how I design my games. Maybe this could be helpful for someone who, is, who wants to do the same. So I'm currently living in Iran. I was born in Iran and uh, I'm living in Isfahan, which is a city in the middle of Iran. Uh, I have made like uh, a few games, uh, like indie games since 2010, I think. Uh, and uh, these games are like uh, not very famous. I haven't made like I haven't sold million copies of my games, but uh, th this uh, like it was enough for me to survive and make more games. So that's good. I, I think I, I have sold like around 25,000 copies of my games so far. And you, most of them are on Steam. Like I, I haven't like these games are just for computers. So I haven't sold uh, any of my games on like mobile phones or like consoles or anywhere else. So these games are just, on Steam and yeah, I have put some images of my games here. You can see like, and I, I will later in the presentation, I will show the game. So I was born in Isfahan and uh, it's a really beautiful city with a lot of uh, Islamic arch architecture. You can see like, uh, I have put some photos of like all these geometric shapes that, uh, uh, we have like in everywhere in our, our art and architecture. So in 2012, I decided to move to uh, Amsterdam to like to into the Netherlands to study like game design and game programming. Before going there, I had already made some a few indie games, but I wanted to like be more connected to the international community of game developers. So I went, like I travel, like I moved to uh, to Breda in the Netherlands and I uh, started studying game programming there. Uh, I, I hope you hear me, I'm not sure, like I'm not used to this uh, like uh, Zoom uh, courses. So I don't know, like does everyone hear me? I, I hope you hear me. Okay, okay, great. So, okay, when I went to, like, when I uh, went to the Netherlands, I started studying, like, game programming there, and it was nice, like, I learned a lot, uh, not only from the university, but just being able to, uh, going to conferences like uh, GDC and, you know, uh, these places where I could meet other game developers. But at the same time, I, I learned a lot of stuff that was not related, like, to games, but uh, more like about the culture, like something that was really interesting to me was that uh, in Europe, uh, a lot of art and architecture is uh, about humans. Like uh, you see humans everywhere. It's like uh, uh, this humanism is a part of the culture. Like uh, it's, to me, it may, I'm, uh, to me, it seems like everything is about like, uh, uh, infractions with humans and like ideas about understanding humans and you could see this everywhere like everywhere in the art it was I felt like like when I was going to museums or like uh, you know even going like to to norm, like visiting cities like I, I could see that like these churches like all these buildings like there there were like some signs of humans like this, I was not used to this. I was not used to like seeing a lot of humans everywhere, like in, in, in the like in the in the art and arch architecture. Because the place I come from, everything I I think all the art and architecture is like everything is based on geometry. Like 
they, they don't uh, they they try to express themselves through like these geometric shapes not not through humans not through statues of like humans and to me that was really uh, like the eye opening because for i learned that okay th like this is something that we are totally different like in a way that uh, we think and we our like the whole culture is like very different in in this aspect the, like all these images like I, I these are like what i could see like in iran in like Isfahan or other cities but but in Europe, it was like not very similar. It was really different. And for, for me, that was really interesting. And and uh, yeah, so and all these like geometric shapes that we see in like countries like in the Middle East or around Middle East, like everything, all this art is based on geometry. And it, a part of it is because like, like uh, a few hundred, like during like the Islamic golden age, like we, Artists like were not allowed to draw humans or living creatures. We uh, every, like they they had to express their feelings through like or emotions through shapes through geometry, and uh, that was really. Uh, I I think I, I would say like ev everyone should be allowed to draw anything they want. If they if someone wants to draw a face, I I think they should be able like we should allow them to draw a face, but. I think this limitation, like this, uh, th they were limited by the fact that they could not draw faces, but this, in a way, it helped them like discover a lot of interesting things about geometry, which normally people would not think about. And I think that's the reason like we, we have like all this beautiful architecture that you, we don't see any faces in them. And in a way, when we see like Western games, I think it, it makes sense that uh, a lot of these games are about uh, humans. Like even if it's not a human in the game, like what they do is very similar to what a human would do. And I think that that comes from like the like this part of like uh, Western culture that like the human is very important in in the culture. So even the games, like it's all about like are like not all of them, but almost all of them is about a guy, which could be an animal or anything. Like, but but it would act in a way that it's a human. So it's all about like uh, is the is the is the guy in the game gonna shoot or jump or run? Or, so it's like. Uh, every, and and you could see like in almost every game that we re like we releases every year, it's like someone is jumping in the game or someone is shooting in the game, which which I don't have anything like it's nice. I'm not saying that it's bad to make games like that. It's totally okay, but I don't think all the games should be like that. Like we, there are so many more ideas that we can come up with. And, but right now, like it's like the whole game industry is obsessed with like making a game about a guy who is gonna do some like push boxes, find the keys, or like uh, you know, like th this cultural thing happens. Like I think it's really like uh, we are, they are doing it a bit too much. Like even the cars have eyes. Like the hamburger has eyes. Everything is. Like we have, is like no. I think a car is a car. Like we, we don't need to put eyes everywhere. Not everything is not about making them like humans. I think, uh, and you can see even like there are games that I really respect, like World of Goo. I I really uh, I love it. Like it's a really beautiful game. But still, like everything in the game has eyes. Like it it seems like the designers were like obsessed with like putting eyes everywhere, you know? Uh, so I'm, I'm reading the chat and someone said like, Disney is gonna be mad about this. Yeah, I think like the whole culture, like Disney is like, like the whole company is based on this. So even like in, in, a, like in a game, when there is a carrot, they put eyes on the carrot. I, I think a carrot is really interesting, but not because it, like, just because it's a carrot. I think a carrot, it's interesting just because it's a carrot, not because it has eyes, not because it talks to us or not because it can jump or talk or 
So I think we are ignoring a lot of interesting ideas by just making everything about like humans. I'm not saying that humans are not interesting. Like there are so many interesting systems in our bodies that like work together. But when, when we make a game that is like press space to jump, it's like we don't see any of these systems. We are just ignoring all these beautiful systems that work together that are like really amazing and really complicated, but we don't see any of this. It's like we press a space and the guy jumps and not like we don't see and we don't learn anything about like all these complicated systems. And I would like, I'm not saying all the games should show these systems, but at least a few of these games, I would like to, like when I jump, I wanna see how this whole system is like working together to, to make the jump. And uh, I think that's what's beautiful about games that we can learn about these systems. Because normally when I read a book, it's so boring and so like difficult to understand like how these things work. But in a game, we can visualize a lot of these complicated ideas and learn about them. So I think we, if like as like uh, game developers, uh, yeah, exactly. Like someone is saying that uh, each keyboard key moves a bone. Yeah, exactly. That's that's one of the ideas. Like that's really interesting to me. Me to 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 see this system, and and we could like do, have a lot of more ideas than that. But that's a really good starting point for I think. But but I think as 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 game developers who live like in the Middle East, we should not uh, follow exactly like what the Western developers are doing. We we can have uh, we, we have so like the culture around us is so like strong, and there is so many ideas that we could find and instead of like you know just making games similar to western games and just changing the story like just just having a different story i think that's not good enough i think we can we can make games that are totally like uh, innovative totally new that no one has seen something like them and like put our culture in the game like put our like those ideas that for thousands of years like we have developed and we should not ignore all those cultures and, you know, like make a game, like a first person shooter game, like the, the whole like first person shooter idea is, to me, is like a very Western idea. Like, you know, like to go to this um, to Middle East and just kill all these like Arab people, you know, like it's, it's so ignorant to me. Like, it's like, they, it's not uh, like, there is so much more to the culture. You know, even like when they write some words in the game, like in Arabic, like it's totally wrong. And they write left to the right and letters are disconnected and everything. It's, it's like offensive, I think. Like we, it's, it's like we are ignoring a whole like few billion people's culture. Uh, and, you know, like the culture, like everything that we have about science, like uh, everything we know about science, almost all of them started from the Middle East. Like everything about, we know about medicine, about no, numbers, like even the word algorithm is like uh, Arabic, like with Arabic origins. And then like, you know, it's, it's really crazy that the games that are like about Middle East is all about like just, you know, killing like people who live here. I think like, uh, pe like people who lived here for the last few centuries, they, they know a lot about like, you know, mathematics, about uh, like astronomy, physics, uh, philosophy, everything. And they, these guys are really like uh, intelligent people and we can learn a lot from like everything that these guys have done and we can, make games about their ideas like they, they have they had so many ideas they just didn't have computers i think if if we could give give these guys some computers they would really make a lot of i think amazing games i i would i would just uh, you know i would try to show some of the ideas that i i think are interesting and that uh, i have learned about like islamic art but these are, these are just a few examples and there are so many more ideas that we, we can like uh, read about them and 
So the, the, I'm, I'm just gonna show you a few simple idea. So we have this thing called Gerecini, which is a geometric idea about like, they have these rules about like, uh, 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 like uh, making geometric shapes and they have some rules. And based on these rules, they, they made really complicated shapes that, uh, that are really amazing, I think. And all they had was just a compass and a ruler. Like that's the only thing that you had. It's really amazing that, uh, you know, they could draw all these complicated shapes with just a ruler and a compass. And today we have computers which are like a million times uh, more powerful than th those tools. And it's, we, I think we should really make games about like, it's uh, about those ideas. It's, uh, I think uh, we, like we have a lot more powerful tools. So we should be able to make even more amazing stuff than the, the, those buildings I showed you. But so, okay. The whole idea about Gerecini like is that they start from a circle and divide a circle to like four parts, five parts or six parts. And, and when, uh, when uh, they, divide this, they come up with like stars. So on the left side, you, you can see that uh, we have like a, a four fold star. And then in the middle, it's like a five fold and then a six fold star. And with these simple shapes, they come up with really complicated shapes. So here you can see like it's a, a eight fold star and then when, when they put it together like they put a lot of this shape like next to each other then it becomes like a really interesting uh, tiles like together and it's it feels really different again here it, it's a different shape and then we, we we get some really interesting results i think i think this is really powerful like why we don't make games about this this is like I'm sure if these guys were like still alive, they would make amazing games about these shapes. This is like, uh, like because the whole like we are, I think the Middle East culture is the only culture that the like almost everything in the art and architecture is about geometry, and the and games are a very nice way to show geometry to play with geometry. Uh, I, I think like it's. We should make a lot of games about these these shapes, and it, like the, this one, like if if we put a lot of like uh, similar shape next like uh, next to each other, we, we will get something like this. And then you can find this like shape in like this is from Morocco, I think, and then like uh, this is from. Uh, uh, let me. Uh, this is to in Turkey, and then uh, this one is Alhambra. It's really amazing, like like this the same shape. How they represent the same shape, like uh, in in, a, in different ways, and like uh, well, like it's so powerful to me. And we, I think it's it's really inspiring. We can we can make games. I think about these shapes and look how the, like how they represent this sim the similar shape is like in deep in like each country it's, it's uh, drawn in a different way but but the basics of the geometry is the same like those rules are the same it seems like they they had like everyone like knew these rules but they represented them like in different way so there is a, another thing called mukarnas, which is like all these uh, amazing shapes you see in the mosque. And then when, when you see like, it, it, we have like a very like, it, like a simple geometric uh, drawings and they, they convert this to something like this. It, it's like, they make it 3D and I don't know, I, I feel like uh, this is like really crazy. Like how, how they could like, come up with these ideas and how these people had like just, you know, with just a ruler and a compass, like they could come up with all these amazing shapes. And this one, like it becomes more and more complicated and more interesting and it's, uh, it's breathtaking, taking, I think. And we, we have like uh, also like 
different arts in 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 the Middle East. Like, and each of these arts had a very special way to draw. Like uh, here, it's a this is a building in Bukhara, Uzbekistan, and like we can go and read about like how they had like how they draw the arcs and for each of these arcs they had like different ways to draw so this one is from morocco and you can see like it's a big circle and the, like they had all these different ideas of, like just for how they want to draw like arcs for the building and each like we can study each of them and then how they exactly draw these arcs so I think like we can just make a game about just drawing the arcs uh, and just like I think even like we can make 100 games about just the arcs like a game that is like the player makes like these different arcs and and then they can see how the building change when when we, we draw them so it's really like I think uh, it would be interesting to make games about these different ideas instead of like you know making a game about the guy who like walks uh, on the blocks and you know get pickups and you know get the coins and that that's like we had like almost like one million games about those ideas and i think we had enough of them we can come up with more uh, interesting like ideas if we just study our own culture, like all these ideas that came up from the Islamic golden age. So, uh, okay, I, I can show you now my games, like uh, all my games, like uh, these games, I these are like really indie games and uh, like there are a lot of, they have a lot of problems and they are not like perfect, but that's, uh, that's just me trying to make games based on these ideas but i think if more people do this then uh, at some point we would have some really amazing games that are really beautiful and maybe go really famous and millions of people play them but the games that i've made are not those games like my games are not very famous they are like not uh, not no one almost know about them but but some people a few thousand people have played them and they like them okay the first game uh, i have made uh is like uh, called farsh which because in Esfahan we have a lot of like carpets and we, we like a lot of people uh, live by making carpets so i made a game about uh, carpets you know like a, a little puzzle game and i released it like in 2004 no, 2012, I think. Uh, it, it was a game, puzzle game about like a carpet that, like you know, rotates tiles and solves puzzles. So, uh, yeah, it was it, it was my first try to like make a game in making a game about like this aspect of the like our culture. And I was living in the Netherlands, so I really wanted to make something that connects me to to the. To the culture that I came from, and I, I released it as a free game. Like it, I didn't really sell the game. Yeah, and a few thousand, like I think a few thousand people downloaded the game, and it really helped me to to get, uh, you know, to uh, to yeah, because I sent the game to some festivals like IGF, and and it was nominated there so it really helped me to be connected to the game industry people to to learn how like about the, the making games and you know to to learn uh, to know people who are making games so it was my starting point after fash i i i was so there, there is this guy called uh, uh, nasir edina tusi who lived like 800 years ago and he he came up with he he, he studied uh, mathematics and he also like uh, something that is really amazing about these guys is that the guy uh, wrote poems but at the same time he also like studied mathematics so it's really amazing that i think because nowadays someone who studies mathematics is like almost no one who studies mathematics is not interested in like I'm not saying everyone, but almost everyone who studies mathematics doesn't really write poems or doesn't. It's really interesting that these these guys 
did all everything at the same time like they wrote poems they studied mathematics they studied philosophy physics so they knew it's like they knew about every a little about everything and i think that's really interesting so one of the things that this guy discovered was is today is called the Tusi couple which is like if uh, if a circle which is half of the size of the bigger circle rotates inside another circle it, it moves in a straight line so every point on the red circle is drawing a straight line so th this is really interesting like uh, how did he 800 years ago how did he learn about this how did he come up with these ideas and uh, to me it's it's amazing so so i decided to to to, to make a game like based on these ideas like how, how these shapes move so I, I will try to uh i will try to show the game that i made inspired by this uh, i i hope you can see it because my internet connection is not the best right now but yeah hopefully you can see it again okay great So in the game, like this is the first level. There is a circle, like there is a ball rolling on the ground. And then uh, if like I can click anywhere on the ball. If, if I click on, in the, on the middle point, like when it moves, I see like, okay, the, the middle point will move in a straight line. But if I draw on the bottom of the, the ball, then it moves like this so i can i can click anywhere on the ball and see how it moves and in each level there is a shape given like on the top part of the screen there is a shape given on the green uh, box so i want to draw something similar to that so i i want to find where i should click on the ball to to draw something like that if if i click on the top part it, it will draw something like that. So th this this game like is all about like you know different situations and checking how these different shapes move. So if I click like here, it moves like this. And it becomes more, okay, no, not this one, let me just go. Okay, so, and it becomes more complicated and I will show you some later levels too. So this is like pure chaos. If I click here, then it's like, uh, and then, Okay, so here I'm, I need to draw something like the shape on the top. Uh, I, I even forgot how, what, what, where, what was the answer. Like, I don't remember. I, I need to click a few times to remember what was the answer. Okay, this game is also like I made this in like five years ago. So I, I think I forgot some stuff. It's called Engare, E N G A R E. Yes. Uh, okay, let me show you some, some uh, other level. Okay, so here you can see like there are three circles rotating, and I want to make something like that. But if I click on the circle on the left, you can see that it's just moving on a, like it's just a scaling. So it will be just a straight line. But the one on, in the middle is like rotating and scaling. So if I click here,
and then it will continue drawing like after we solve the puzzle as a like uh, as a prize you you get some uh, a shape which is very similar to those shapes that like we were talking about not, not exactly like them but it's like uh, it's one of those like geometric shapes And there are other levels, like uh, I will not show you everything, but there is one, uh, like in the game, there is uh, some extra toys that people can play with, like, um, and I will show you them. So if uh, here, it's like, there, there, there is a straight line and it's like, uh, if, if, if I move any of these points, you can see that uh, the line, the lines on the right will change based on like how I move this point. So, uh, and you know, like how, it's really amazing how, uh, how like all these complicated shapes that like, be, like it become like it draws just based on a very like basic shape that I'm drawing, it becomes like really different different shapes and then i can and then uh, you know i can uh, i can change how many times it's it's uh, like repeated so i can make it really like a lot or i can make it also like I also can put this on a dome of a mask. So here you can see like, uh, oh wait, oh. so you can see uh, how it looks like on a dome. Like uh, if if you put it on a in, Adam in a use it in a mask, and I can change like. You know, like okay, but there, there are other like parts I I want to show you. Like uh, here, it's like you know, you you can like uh, draw like this, uh, you know, these Arabic scripts that we can see on like on masks or so. Oh, this is like okay, this one. I will show you later. This one is like not not very interesting, but uh, wait, wait. It's uh, ah, this this one was the one I wanted to show you. So here I can I can uh, draw circles, not not circles, but like uh, for or like uh, a section of a circle, and then I can see like how it looks like uh, the. And again, I can like change how, how many times it's repeated. So, uh, I hope my internet connection is not too slow. Like, I hope you can see like how everything is working because, uh, yeah. But, but again, I, I, can, I can put this on a, on a mask, like a, on a dome of a mask. Okay, great. H happy to hear it. And I can, you know, just move, move it on, on the dome and see like how. Uh, okay. Yeah, so so all the math behind it is like uh, not very complicated, but but it's like right now the one that you can see is just uh, these shapes are just 
uh, like projected on a dome so it's not so like impossible to like it's not really complicated but it's something that there are so many books and written by these people who made all this like great art and architecture and by reading those I, like because i don't want to go in this like i don't want this course to be about like math uh, mathematics but more like about getting inspirations like to 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 make stuff like this but 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 uh, i can later i can yeah send you all the math behind them if you want uh yeah there are some other stuff here but uh, i yeah i will not so yeah it, there are lots of like different type of tools to make all these shapes and uh, yeah i will just quit the game because yeah i think you saw enough from the game but i i want to show you the next game i made after engara which i released like about 2 months ago Th this one is called uh, tandis thank you I don't know, should I, maybe I should not read the chat, but I just wanted to have some feedback if everyone was hearing me. Okay, so in this one, um, uh, okay. So this one uh, is about like, uh, this one is again about shapes, but uh, so here you can see two grids and one is like bigger one so if i if put a letter on the smaller one i will get the bigger version on the right side so or if I, so i can put the bigger one again put it on the smaller one and get the bigger version here so it's like i can play like make, make something really big or make make something really tiny this is just the first level to you know to to show the idea but then it becomes more like here this one makes everything a bit wavy so everything becomes more like a like a sign sign function so all each of these grids is representing a mathematical function and using these grids we can create like really complex uh, shapes so in each level, I have to make the, something similar to the gray shape that you can see. Okay, these were just to show you the idea, but I wanna show you like the, that, like where it becomes interesting. So here you can see there is a circular grid. And I if if I put something like, if I put this on the normal grid, I get the circular version of the shape. And it becomes more complicated. Like here, if, if I put it, uh, I, I can make a donut. Like if I bring this one here, and then, you know, all these, geometric shapes is now like I can make them using these grids. And yeah, so. can see how, how complicated it becomes and yeah like you we get all these strange shapes okay uh, let me show you some other stuff it, it becomes more complicated later in the game and like at some point you are making really strange shapes so here is like it's like how you create
Okay. Uh, so yeah, that's that's Tandis. I I I I yeah. I there, there was so much more stuff I could show you in Tandis, but just just to make sure that it doesn't become boring. And I, I stuff. yeah. So I yeah, that's it. So thank you so much for having me. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Oh, well, awesome. Thank you so much, Mahdi. That was really cool. Uh, everybody, as usual, raise your hand if you have a question or alternatively, you can type it out in the chat. Uh, can you see the chat, Mahdi? Mm. Yes, yes, I can see. Uh, you have a question from JP asking which yeah. engine to use. <laughs> okay, so for Angara, I, I used Open Frameworks, which is like a framework for uh, creating visual stuff based on C++. But for Tandis and Fash, the carpet game and the last game I showed you, I used Unity. Uh, uh, the, the, the carpet one, I it was released for free, but you can find it uh, on my website, I think. I, I will make sure, I will check it. Like the website is mahdibahrami.com, M-A-H-D-I. B A H, yeah, B A H R A M I dot com. I, I can just write it in the chat. Yeah, yeah, exactly. No problem. And then uh, the development process for Candice. Uh, uh, so, first, uh, yeah, it was like, uh, like, I'm not sure how to explain, but it was like four years of like me trying different uh, ideas because all the shapes that you see in the game, they, they like I had to spend a lot of time with the game to come up with interesting shapes to put in the game. So like for me, it took, it was not like four years of full-time work, but more like four years of thinking about the game, but not full-time. Like maybe like for a few weeks, I worked on the game, but. And then for a few weeks, I just took a break. So yeah, that, that was how, like it was a really long four years of me trying to make an interesting game based on this idea. Uh, so someone asked if the models were made in Blender. No, like all the models in Tandis every all of them were made in the game like based on like those geometric like so like i didn't like maybe only the two first levels which were like arabic letters i used blender like oh okay i i don't understand like that that question i don't are you a mod oh okay i i think yeah is that a joke maybe i'm not sure So, <laughs> okay. Uh, okay, I think uh, I answered all the, no, no problem. Yeah, I answered, all, I think all the questions. Is, is there any other question? Yeah. Right now I'm thinking about my next project. I'm not sure what it would be, but may, probably it would be something uh, like based on geometry someone raised hands i think you so i think should i uh yes uh, yusuf go ahead uh, ask your question yeah i'm just interested in like how do you uh, how do you deform the shapes into different shapes yes. is it uh do you apply functions to the geometry to make it that way yeah exactly and i use shaders for that like with shaders you can like change the shape of a model and, you know, like do all this mathematical stuff using shaders. So if you use shaders, like you can do all this magical stuff. Oh, okay, cool. No problem.
Uh, okay. Honestly, Mehdi, thank you so much for this session. I feel like what you talked about was super necessary. I think uh, you're completely right that we need to like get inspired by our own cultures more. And I honestly love everything that you've done. And I'm so excited to see the other games that you're going to do. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm, I'm happy that you enjoyed it. <laughs> of course. Thank you so much. No problem. Um, and wh where can we reach out to you, of course? Uh, so I'm on Twitter uh, and my handle is like uh, Bahrami. I, I will just uh, write it in the chat. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, that's my Twitter and my website. I already, I think uh, I put it there. Yeah. And my email address, if anyone wants to send me an email, is like that. <laughs> Thank you okay. so much. Uh, no I hope worries. everybody <laughs> I hope everybody enjoyed the session. I know I did. Um, and yeah, I hope that you all take uh, some of Mahdi's advice and you know start taking in some of our own culture and some of what we like, you know, the art that we have locally and put it into your games and to what you create. And I'm so excited to see what it comes out of everybody in this group. <laughs> Great. Thank you for having me. Thank you. It was it was really lovely, honestly. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And uh, as you can see, everybody else enjoyed it. Yeah. So that's great. Thank you so much, everyone. Thank you. Well, have a nice evening, everybody. You too. Bye. Oh, let me stop the recording. Oh.